Okay, I asked my audience to tell me whether or not cytochrome P450 metabolism and uridine diphosphate glucuronosyl transverse metabolism happen at the same time or if one comes before the other. And I've got the answer for you. So I know that in vivo, which tells you that this has been tested in living human test subjects, that milk thistle extract is a UGT1A9 enzyme inhibitor that works on what extensively metabolizes 11-hydroxy-THC and that metabolite is a lot more psychoactive than its parent compound being the Delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol and when I took a bunch of milk thistle extract when I was using THC at the time it didn't make a substantial difference. It didn't seem to make any difference in how psychoactive THC was. I know that I can only expect so much from THC psychoactivity from having a garnered tolerance. However, I know from my experience using cannabidiol the night prior to using THC when the negative elastric modulating effects of cannabidiol do not counteract the psychoactivity of tetrahydrocannabinol, it actually has an impact on cytochrome B450 metabolism because cannabidiol is indeed an inhibitor of different cytochrome P450 enzymes, one of those being the CYP2C9 enzyme, which extensively metabolizes the THC into the 11-hydroxy THC. The reason why the 11-hydroxy THC wasn't as psychoactive when I took a bunch of the milk thistle extract was because the 11-hydroxy THC metabolites were not being formed from extensive metabolism of THC. See, when you take edibles and you get that extensive metabolism, it takes two hours before it even takes into effect the psychoactive effects because it's got to go through the digestive metabolism process instead of you just having inhalation be the root of administration. And I've come to this understanding. THC has to have as much of an impact on dextromethorphan metabolism as cannabidiol because that also was shown to inhibit the CYP2D6-3O demethylation of the dextromethorphan into dextromorphin. If you inhibit the enzyme that breaks the compound down, take for example delta-9-THC into 11-hydroxy-THC, by inhibiting that metabolic process you accumulate better more of the delta-9-THC and more is metabolized at a time into the 11-hydroxy THC. It may take longer for the effects to set in. However, that allows for better accumulation of the metabolites. A very similar effect is seen with serotonin transporter inhibitors. You block the transportation of serotonin more serotonin is accumulated. Anyway, that's it for right now. Just wanted to do a follow-up on what I was wondering in one of my other videos. I did a self-experimentation for the audience for informational research purposes. Y'all have a nice night.